A few years ago, my brother rang me from the United States of America, where he lives now, and asked me would I fly over and test to see if I was a match to give him a kidney. Yeah, I know. Serious shit. So you say yes, right? You would say yes. Your brother rings you, you say yes because you're brother and you love him, but also because he's the favourite in the family and you know you'd never hear the fucking end of it <laughs> if you were in any way connected to his death. Uh, he is the favourite. He knows he's the favourite. How many people in the room know what it's like not to be the favourite sibling? Yeah, and, and the rest orphans, I assume, right? I know I'm not the favourite. We all know we're not the favourite. He is the favourite. It's that simple. My father once said to me at Christmas, he said, Charlotte, you know that when your mother was pregnant with you, it was your brother that prayed to Jesus that it would be a boy. <laughs> yeah, like what the fuck am I meant to do with that information? <laughs> like what am I meant to Like thank you, thank you for that. At least now we know why he did it. Fucking spare parts. <laughs> Come on board, guys. It's going to get a bit darker. <laughs> No, I flew over. I flew over fast. It had to happen fast. You had to get there quick for the testing. So I flew over quickly. Uh, and that was easy. That was the easiest bit. Getting to America was the easiest bit. There was no travel ban at the time. And even if there was, it wouldn't have affected me. It's not like I come from a country with a history of terrorism. Oh, God. Good fun. We're all having fun. Mm. And I mean, the Mayo Clinic is basically NASA for medicine. We had top-to-toe testing for 48 hours. Every test imaginable, EKG, MRI, PPI, UFC, <laughs> tests I'd never heard of. And I am coming out on top, and I have never gotten good results from any doctor at any point in my life, so I'm in shock. So much so that I'm kind of cocky going in on day two. Doctor pulls me aside and goes, these tests are important. They are important. You're doing great. But the most important test is a psychological examination today. How's that now? What's that, uh, what's, what's that about now? It's a two, two and a half hour interview with our best psychiatrist. Now, none of us know why this is, but when Irish people get asked questions, <laughs> sincere questions by Americans, <laughs> the temptation to take the piss <laughs> is so vast, rises inside you. Like a giggle at a funeral, you can't. It's the more sincere they become, the more you think, I'm gonna volley this into the back of the sarcastic net. And these are the most sincere questions any human being can ask another. First question, how would you feel if after donating the kidney, his body rejected it? <sighs> Be fucking furious. I would regard that as highly ungrateful. <laughs> I'd get it back. I'd get it back off him. That'd be the next thing. I'd get it back off him. I'd tear it out his arse. <laughs> Belly button, whichever. I'd get it back. You don't say it. You don't say it. But it comes to the front of your mind. It came to the front of my mouth. Instead, you give the answer you think the doctor wants to get so that you can get out of there and do the great thing. And then they start asking you questions about your alcohol consumption. <laughs> and now you no longer need to take the piss. Because you're honest, you're real, you're genuine Irish answers sound like piss take answers <laughs> to any American doctor. And these are not difficult questions. Question number one, do you drink? I get the perfectly acceptable Irish answer of, not really. <laughs> what? It's a yes or no. Uh, oh, oh, well then no, then no. Yeah, yeah no, sit down, no. Compared to my friends, no. We all know that's true. It's not an A or B answer. It's relative to these fucking idiots that you hang around with. And those men ridicule my drinking at every opportunity. She's like, so when, when, when would you drink? When do you, when do you drink? I said, well, never. I wouldn't. Like, I don't. I, 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 I do, but like, I wouldn't. I'm not. You couldn't put me in the category. Uh, I, I, like, when I'm going, when, no, listen, here. To be totally honest with you, on, on my old doc, seriously, look at me. I don't. I would never. I never just drink. I never do that. I will occasionally drink drink. But I'll never just drink. The beautiful part about this moment here is all of you know exactly <laughs> what that means. But the term drink drinking is not used at the Mayo Clinic. They've never heard of the term. 
It's not on any of the forms. And it's very hard to explain the term drink drinking to an American doctor without using phrases like, you know what I mean, doc, when you want to do a bit of damage. <laughs> so she thinks she's in an intervention. She's around my side of the table. She's knee to knee with me. Tell me, when does the drink drinking occur? <laughs> I mean, you guys know the answer. Weddings, right? Everything else is child's play compared to this shit. The gloves come off at a wedding. She's like, what? and how many drinks would you typically have at a wedding? Yeah, Jesus, somebody said. <laughs> how many drinks would you typically... Who the fuck has ever counted? I think that's an undocumented figure. I don't think anybody has ever counted one, two, three, four at a wedding. Because the question is not how many. The question is, how long? <laughs> How long are they going to serve us for? The question is, do I have a room at the hotel? <laughs> is there a bar extension? Did I bring cans? These, these are the questions. And I was like, I don't know, Doc. I couldn't tell you now. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head now. Was, uh, I, 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 I'm just there for the romance now. I wouldn't be able to put a figure on that. Well, we've got time. Why don't we work through it? Why don't you explain to me how the drinking pattern works at an Irish wedding. It's like, if I do this, no Irish person is ever going to be permitted to give a kidney ever again. But instead, you're here. You can't deny it. You've got to go. You go. I said, uh, well, the way it works for me is uh, the night before. <laughs> go on Google Maps and I figure out where the church is. Right? Then I switch to Street View. figure out where the nearest pub to the church is, right guys? <laughs> Go there at 11 o'clock and have a few. <laughs> so it's time to go to the... She's horrified, shocked and appalled. Why would you do that? Because you don't know how long that ceremony's going to take. <laughs> By the end of this, I'm explaining to her how uh, it's not uncommon towards the end of the evening for an old man to climb over the bar at the wedding. <laughs> start pulling pints to help out <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm walking out of there fully intact I've blown it it's done instead she says it explains a lot what you're saying to me explains a lot because it, it's the same pattern that we see among athletes who donate they have a big game and a blowout and then a long dry period <laughs> big game blowout long dry period and athletes like you <laughs> extremely high kidney function that's what I'm seeing I've never told a doctor to fuck off in my entire life. <laughs> fuck off. And that is one of the many steps that produced my brother now having three kidneys. <laughs> and me flying on one. There you go. <laughs> 